With me is Richard Fields, and a special guest is Janice Bonzer. She's running for the California Assembly District 6 with a, a known opponent, Kevin McCarty. Um, Janice, so why did you decide to run? Libertarians are against all wars. We are in favor of peace. We're, as far as I can tell, we're the only have that on our platform. It's, it's very important to me that we have peace and that we don't have war. As a matter of fact, the things that libertarians love best are private property and trading, which always brings peace. And in order to have, um, in order to trade, we need to have private property. And this really excels the, our health and our well being because the more we trade, the more private property we create. And the more private property we create, the more we can trade. And so it keeps going on and on until we are all very wealthy. And just the opposite is true. When we tax people, it actually creates wars, especially sanctions create wars. And so basically, because I love peace so much and because I love people so much, because I want us to all thrive and be well, that's why I'm a libertarian. One of the reasons I was a libertarian is because I'm a humanist, right? Essentially, I'm a humanist. And so for me, this is the only home I had. And so is that kind of the kind of philosophy you kind of approach with politics is from the human level? Yeah, that's the only way I can do it. I, I can't do it from a political level. I see people speaking about um, what other laws. And um, I think oftentimes, it's the market that solves problems and not actually the laws. And sometimes the market does make problems like in the um, Amazon rainforest, where it's really good to grow cattle and where they're burning down the rainforest. And then people are made a, a legal complaint saying that they couldn't burn down the rainforest anymore and then they won. However, they continue to grow, burn down the rainforest and set for two new things that have just happened. One is that um, the satellites, not exactly new, that can monitor who burns. And the other is that um, people care about what other people think. And so there's the pressure worldwide to not burn, burn down the Amazon forest. But the most important thing, I think I said two things, but three things, is that there's this one company that has discovered how to revitalize the burnt down acreage and continue to use it as, as a, at a bigger profit than to burn new uh, rainforest. And so that's what's stopping the burning. It's the market. So I believe in the market. I believe in trading. I believe in goodwill toward men and that we really do because we need each other. You're running uh, for assembly in California. What, what are the, I, I know that uh, uh, marijuana uh, and uh, industrial hemp and so forth have always have been a, a, a driving force for you for as long as I've known you, many, many years. Uh, is that still the case? Are you still uh, working on those issues? And uh, uh, what needs to be done in California to make that, to make that uh, a, better, uh, a better thing? As you know, um... President Obama, when he was president, uh, signed the um, Hemp Farmers Act bill, which sounds so good. I was so happy, but it's riddled with uh, regulations and license fees and taxes so much that hemp farmers are not wanting to grow it. It's not the billion dollar crop as popular mechanics described it when a machine was just invented. A machine had just been invented in 1937 and it harvested hemp and popular mechanics and mechanical engineering both talked about what a great crop that is and that it's worth, um, mechanical engineering called it the most profitable crop that can be grown and popular mechanics called hemp the new billion dollar crop all because a machine had been invented. However, then came the Marijuana Tax Act and also because it's a machine and the par farmers were poor and then we had all these regulations against it. And so we didn't have the billion dollar crop and we still don't because of all the regulations and all the taxes. 
all the license fees. Ruins everything. In California, especially, they have legal marijuana, but it's easy. It's it's now easier to be a marijuana criminal than it used to be, because you used to have to actually go out your way to become a marijuana criminal. Now you can try to become, you can try to have a legal business and end up being a marijuana criminal, and and all the regulations and the taxes, and so it's actually still cheaper to buy to buy the marijuana from the drug dealer than it is to go into the store, which was the whole point, right? Was to make it cheap enough to go into the store, and they've even destroyed that. Taxes always destroy everything, and including peace. We have to be against taxes and regulations and license fees if we want peace. But we're so used to taxes, and we're so used to war. Uh, America's in 99 wars right now. Only six of them volatile. So, anyways, hemp is different from marijuana, and um, it, we used to name our state New York. Hempstead, Pennsylvania, Hempstead, Arkansas, and there's even a Hempstead here in Sacramento, uh, Hempstead Drive, um, right on Morrison, Morse Avenue, Morrison, Hempstead. And um, but the thing is, it used to be the standard, and that's all messed up. Nobody recognizes hemp anymore. They confuse it with marijuana. And that was the same thing that happened in 1937. Yeah, and oh, you're talking about regulations. Um, we're living in California. We'll switch to housing real quick. Um, we're living in, we okay. live in Sacramento. We and I both live in Sacramento. And we know it costs the average of $90,000 for a permit, just the permit to build a house. And so when your house is three, you buy your new house for $400,000, $100,000 that goes to the government just for permits, which also has the, the, the secondary effect of increasing property values, which means they get to have increased property taxes every year over the course of the time and so it's this it's this a uh, shell game essentially that they've created amongst themselves now how do as a state assembly person how would you kind of go about that would you fight for a law to reduce the, the permitting fees or something like that to help actually create affordable housing without having the government get involved that sounds like a great idea i did was a problem do, doing that i know that there's other problems regarding home ownership um not I, I only, um, so I don't really have a solution, but that solution sounds pretty good. What I do know is that um, there is code enforcement that was voted unanimously. They invented a code enforcement personnel who comes to your home and will count your home as a rental housing unit. And then if, if you have a friend there who takes out the garbage once in a while, and then they call that on consideration. Um, it's a way that people lose their homes. It's because um, the code man can say anything he wants and, and it, can, it, it counts as truth until you can um, appeal it. And you, could, you can also make it so the appeal um, is too late. And so I've seen um, houses on the news that look like are very nice, but they're being sold from the owners under protest because the code man has been there. I, I think that we're fighting the government from every angle. I think that they're trying to take our homes in any way they can and make us just rent um, because it's more profitable for them. There's the, the problem about um, getting a permit. We used to never get permits for anything. We could have um, build our own home, own a gun. Oh, that reminds me. So there has been 27 shootings um, nationwide, and um, mostly with uh, assault r rifles. And I was thinking about that and about how we don't want regulations and we don't want um, license fees. And, and that um, as a good libertarian, I have been always voting no on all of those things. However, I think I will vote yes on some regulations regarding assault weapons, even though that's not very libertarian of me. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, sometimes no, you can a, be libertarian and just be a little bit um, Democrat. No, well, it's not even, you know, you're libertarians, we're allowed to not agree on 100% of everything, right? We're allowed to disagree and have disagreements and still be friendly and, 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 
and kind to each other, right? That's the whole point of being libertarians. You can actually disagree and still be friendly and kind and compassionate with each other. We can disagree about how many regulations we already have and how many more would be, would actually might do anything or, or, you know, if it's, you know, mental health issues, or maybe it's the schooling issue. It's a very complex issue. And, and so, you know, we're not going to solve it here today. So, (laughs) you know, that's not something that's in our, in our um, purview, but, but, you know, letting people know that, you know, you have, especially in your district, your district is actually quite supportive of more gun regulations. So it's not, you're not actually out of step with the people of your district. I, I know the people of your district. I, I asked to support them. You know, that was a disagreement we had. So you're actually in agreement with your people of your district. And there's nothing wrong with that as a libertarian, as any politician, right? Your job is to help your, your people be heard. And so there's nothing wrong with, with, uh, you know, expressing I didn't know your that. I just felt in my heart that's the way yeah. I want to vote. Well, if and that's the know, best way to thing, do it. For, this, um, as far as um, housing goes, I am very concerned about the homeless people, and I would like to help them too. I have a, a plan. It sounds kind of crazy, but it would only be private industry helping the homeless people, and we'd be making money of it, doing it. So. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people making money in the the homeless industrial complex that we I call it now. I call it the homeless industrial complex. There's a, there's a lot of people making money in in homelessness right now. There's a lot of businesses and nonprofits that are making a lot of money off of the government oh. largesse of the homeless problem. And it's why would it be like that? I had no idea that people were making money off of homelessness. I yeah, like. Oh. I wouldn't want to do that. I would only want to help them and give them another choice. And this is very silly. I, I know it would be a miracle if I should win. Because, um, mm-hmm. uh, but I do believe in long shots. And um, if I should win, I would like to um, buy some, get some investors to buy some land in um, Susanville. Um, the county has already bought um, 100 acres of land here in Sacramento. For twelve million dollars, and it looks like a desert in the middle of nowhere. Susanville has got uh, sixteen thousand acres with a big uh, creek and lake enough to irrigate the entire sixteen thousand acres. And um, I would like to make that a a good place for people to live and perhaps even own land there. So to so you could go there and with nothing, make enough money and make enough uh, so that you can own land of your own. It would be very, you know, inspiring. That's what I want to do. I want to inspire the homeless. I want to create something good for them. And anybody else who wants it. Well, it's so hard now. Once you have, once you, once you get homeless and you get down to nothing, it's hard to get back up to one right? It's hard to get back up on that first step. Once you have nothing, it's hard to get back up on that first step. And so anything, any idea, anything anybody can do to help is is something I'm fully supportive of. Yeah, that's that's what I would like to do, to create and inspire and help the homeless that way. Give them a place, not actually give them a place, like, but inspire them to earn a place. I think it's different. I think actually the war on drugs helps uh, makes the homelessness too, because then you can't have a job because you're working fine and they find out that you smoke some pot and so they're firing you. That's, that's wrong. We should yeah. be uh, judged by what we do, not by what we ingest. Well, and a lot of these problems is people fall into the drug addiction because they end up being homeless. You, you People... No one grows up wanting to be a drug addict, right? They be, they become harmed in some far, form or fashion, whether it's trauma, or you know, or physical harm, and they the are using drugs to medicate themselves. It's it's if you think of it that way, then it's actually quite sad because it's very human. And how many of us wouldn't do that if we felt desperate enough? You know, would couldn't get there if we were desperate enough. It, it's a sad, it's a very sad thing. You're yes, desperate, and that, disconnected from your family. Yeah, and, and we need to be connected. In order to solve that problem, we need to give them more support and take better care of them and, and each other. 
because if you disconnect them, like put them in prison and, and tell them they're a bad person, it makes the problem worse. Richard, do you have anything you want to, well, you went away for a little bit. Were you back here for us? Yeah, I'm back. Uh, no. I'm uh, uh, curious, Janice, to be the, uh, the first, uh, let's say, one or two bills that you would introduce into the assembly once elected. Assembly one elected. You're the new assemblyman for the, for the sixth district. What, what bill would you introduce right away? What, what bill would you right away? I still didn't hear you, but I'm running for California Assembly Sixth District. That's all I heard. Yeah, what yeah, what, what would be your first bill? What would be your first bill or two? Uh, I'd like to get um, conflicting regulations out of the way of biodigesters. In 2016, uh, they made the, um, oh, I forgot what it's called, but it's supposed to help the planet. And really what it does is um, make it difficult to make biodigesters because it's against uh, federal air regulations. I would, okay. I think that, I don't really know how to make a bill, but I would try to make it um, that bill um, so it's not conflicting. Oh, so you, so you uh, biodigesters? Is that like um? Is that like, uh, oh, what's the what's the word I'm looking oh, for? Is that like uh? Like, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Is that, a, for? Is that a? A biodigester is a simple machine mm -hmm. that you put your green waste and cow manure in there and any kind of other manure, and it creates four important products: water sterilized organic fertilizer, energy, and uh, cellulose. And cellulose is um, a very versatile product. It's something that all plants make. And if you know uh, George Washington Carver, he um, invented um, 250 or 350 uses for the peanut. And um, so cellulose is a very versatile product that you would get from your green waste and in the biodigester and the biodigester sterilizes the cellulose for use as more than 25,000 products from dynamite to cellophane. And cellophane is uh, the plastic that we used to use um, that is non-toxic and biodegradable. And most people don't know about um, cello sponges, which is short for cellulose, which is cost the same it says cello c-e-l-l-o and it's um, made from plants and it never gets stinky it costs it's is much better than the petroleum um, sponges that we use now and um, all products from cellulose is not are non-toxic and biodegradable they sell um, cellulose garbage bags and um, cellulose plates and cups and things and that's just one of the products that a biodigester makes. The other three is um, sterilized organic fertilizer, which is, uh, you know, when you grow your garden and you use organic fertilizer, how everything tastes really good. Well, sterilized organic fertilizer also has no E. coli poisoning, no salmonella weed seeds, and is completely sterile and clean. And, um, it is better to grow your plants with and your plants taste better and are bigger when you use sterilized organic fertilizer. And then there's water, which, you know, <laughs> we can all use and it's clean and um, potable and you can drink it and um, we could, you could use it to water your crops. And then there's um, energy, which is uh, methane, which the biodigester collects from the plants and um, fecal matter, and um, this uh, methane can be turned into electricity. So um, we have um, conflicting regulations against a simple machine. The technology is 300 years old, and um, they never taught us about biodigesters in school. It help us get rid of our sewage, help us our help us with our water bill, help us with our energy bill, and they never taught us about that in school. Uh, see, I would get conflicting regulations out of the way of biodigesters. We're starting to use them now, and um, just we're starting to use it now, but people don't really know about it too much. 
No, sometimes we forget about the old classic ways of doing things. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. We'll talk to you guys later. Good night. Yeah.